we begin worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join in responsive reading in our Lenten dialogue. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever will be. Amen. Holy Lord God, Jesus washed the disciples' feet as a sign of service and compassion. Show us how to live and love in service and with compassion for the sake of all your children, through the same Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning from the 13th chapter of John. The reading is for the second Sunday in Lent and is from John's Gospel, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from the world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know that I, what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. Well, last Sunday we focused on the uh, story in John's Gospel of uh, Jesus' raising of Lazarus, uh, and uh, it is the seventh sign in the Gospel of John, ultimately leading to the greatest sign, which will be Jesus being raised on the cross. Now, this week we focus on chapter 13 which begins uh, this long discourse in John's Gospel, a full five chapters in which Jesus talks to his disciples and uh, in his farewell address. So this morning, in effect, we've also completely skipped over a chapter from last week. We've skipped over chapter 12 
Following the raising of Lazarus, Jesus returns uh, to the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus in Bethany, and they have a dinner party for Jesus and his disciples. And during that time, Mary anoints Jesus' feet with a costly perfume and wipes them with her hair. And we're told that this is six days before the Passover. And following that event, we read the, uh, the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and the beginning of his final week. And so this passage today comes after that entry into Jerusalem. And Jesus expresses his love for his followers. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. It's in this context of love that Jesus does this unusual thing when he washes his disciples' feet. And another uh, comment is is appropriate here. Uh, In our reading, we assume often that it was the 12 disciples, but that's not necessarily true. It was all of those who were Jesus' followers. Um, and also including, of course, in our text, Judas Iscariot, who would soon betray him. So actually, in chapter 12 and chapter 13, we have a double anointing. Uh, The first with Mary anointing Jesus' feet, and then Jesus uh, washing uh, the feet of his disciples. Uh, Jesus... uh, washing a symbolic sign of mutuality and reciprocity in God's redeeming reign. Jesus who acts as a servant leader, a Messiah who does feet, a clear sign of God's redemptive intent, seeking to bring all of creation back into a life-giving relationship Uh, that from the beginning was God's design and intention in everything that God created as good. So typically in Jesus' day, it was the host's responsibility to only provide the basin and water for washing feet, and people typically washed their own feet. Now the second possibility... Uh, most often would be that there would be a female slave who would wash the feet of the guests. In Jesus' day, no free person would ever wash the feet of another free person. That was the hierarchy of the day. And that has been the hierarchy of the Western world even into our recent past. Slavery and racism develop out of this understanding of hierarchy and status and standing in life. That patriarchal formula for most of our nation's history has also been white men on top, followed by white women, followed by black men, by black women, a system dominated by a prerogative of patriarchy, but not so in God's redemptive reign. Jesus seeks rather to demonstrate the new reality of community in God's kingdom, where the master, the leader, washes the feet of the student where the master, the leader, takes the role of the slave. An extraordinary gesture of humility and love and equality. An extraordinary act intended to be an example of how to live into this new reality of Christian community. Even to Jesus washing the feet of Judas. This extraordinary presence of love, even opposite the evil present in the room. And this is still where our world is today. 
Indeed, much progress has come, but we are still trying to live into the reality of God's ideal where God is at work even now in our world. This mission of bringing all creation back into relationship of perfect love and unity and mutuality. Reflected in Jesus, made known in the power of the Spirit, still bringing life into places of bondage and oppression and domination caused by the false standard that we hold of power and status. Think how long it has been, it has taken for the historical powers of dominance and greed and pride to get beyond the practice of slavery. Even though it's still very present under the surface in our society today, in practices that still literally keep people in a system without hope. Rumbling still present today in the convergence between movements like Black Lives Matter and its counter in white supremacy. Think about how long historically it has taken for women to receive the vote in supposedly free societies. How long it has taken for women to not be considered property of their male counterparts. How long it is still taking even now for equal pay and equal opportunity. How difficult it is for us in our current economy to provide adequate support for child care. Think about how long this conversation has been in matters of sexual orientation and the realities of birth that are behind LGBTQ and transgender realities. These have not been easy conversations. And within the church and faith communities, these have often led to places of division and deep darkness and exploitation and hurt for so many decades of cover-up and exploitation and victimization. And even now in our world, the situation in Ukraine is still aggravating those situations of power and greed and exploitation. The war in Ukraine has highlighted so much of this chasm between wealth and influence and power and privilege. Yesterday's news, the LGBT communities in Ukraine are fearful of the intolerance and oppression of those communities in Putin's Russia. And yet the example of Christ is before us again today. Are we still a people who believe in washing feet? Are we committed to the ways of God's mission in this world, where humility and love go hand in hand? where we see God's great future not in isolation from those who are different from us, but in joining with sisters and brothers who share God's vision of life together in community with diversity. Where money and power and dominance don't necessarily equate to the good life, but where the Jesus who went to the cross for the sake of love is still the Jesus who is willing to wash our feet. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue uh, in prayer. Draw close to the heart of God. We offer those prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Each petition ends with the words, Merciful God, and you are invited to respond, receive our prayer. 
You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction of our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change the course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You hear us when we cry to you. Attend, attend to those expecting a child and console those who are, have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and ad adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower confirmation leaders and parents who share their faith with younger generations. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are ended and now rest with you. On the final day, Gather, us, gather all of us with them in your loving arms. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Lord, we present before you all those listed in our prayer concerns and celebrations. And now, in this moment of silence, we name before you those whom you have specifically placed upon our hearts. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious Father, we uh, seek your blessing to be upon Millie as uh, she anticipates um, a placement of a port uh, this coming week and then uh, chemo uh, sessions following that. Lord, surround her with a constant sense of your presence and of your love. Lord, we hold up... Um, the situation in Ukraine, even now as um, people are dying, as uh, conflict continues, as our world is caught up in concern and tension, Lord, we pray that your spirit work in powerful ways with uh, leaders and those in authority to work for ways uh, that bring forth peace and a sense of justice and mercy. Lord, for all these things and whatever else that you see that we have need of, we come imploring in the mercy of your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's stand and extend that greeting. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.